What I want for you to do is, there's a few blanks on here, and again, we're at the problem solving and dimensional analysis portion of the notes. We will, I'm going to have you write the blanks down, and then I'm going to turn this off and we're going to work on the board. So there's one definite, or I'm sorry, one word there, definition, so make sure you get that. And again, it's the problem solving and dimensional analysis. I believe the other blank that we care about today is right after one more point, at least one. Okay, everybody get those two? So definition on at least one. And we will go over all of this on the board, so I'm not going to read it to you. But you can look at it if you go home and go, oh man, I don't remember what he said. Or you can look at the video. I'll have that posted probably on the calendar or on the schedule. Um, we're not going to talk about classification of matter until next week, so we'll be doing this for the next couple of days. Okay. So, again, making sure everybody has the blanks, at least one, and definition. Okay. Now, what this is actually dealing with when we talk about dimensional analysis or factor labeling, we're actually going to be doing some conversions. And today we're going to go from metric to metric conversions and metric to English conversions and vice versa. And in science, we have to be able to do that a lot. And especially when we start doing stoichiometry, which you have no idea what that is yet, that's all this is, is conversions. So let's go ahead and put that away. If you take your notes and... If you take your note packet, flip it over on the back, it's blank. I'm going to do some problems up on the board that are not in the packet, but it's kind of, kind of necessary to be able to do that. Don't write real big. Have your calculator out, because I'm going to show you some calculator tricks as well. Okay. Let's start off. example of a dimensional analysis type problem that we're going to work with in the next week or so. In this case, is this a metric to metric or a metric to English or an English to metric conversion? Is that a metric to metric, metric to English, or English to metric? Anybody tell me? Metric to metric, how do you know? Can we just learn about it? What else? True, we did just learn about it. Both the Good, we have our meter in here. Now, what we also learned last week, this in the scope here, the screen, um, we did our metric conversions or prefixes, the great mega king one day caught me microwaving nasty pizza, right? And then anything to the zero power is one. Deci negative 1, Sente negative 2, and then the 3, 6, 9, 12, all the way out. Okay? Now, you're going to find out that you will probably be writing this on every homework, every quiz, and every test. Nothing wrong with that. Okay? So there's our prefixes and the values associated with that. Now, when I look at, say, the unit gram, liter, or meter, okay? What prefix do each of these have as it stands? None. That's why it has 10 to the 0. In other words, I don't have to move anywhere to go from, say, centigrams. Okay, if I do, then I move the decimal two times. All right. So whenever we're looking at just the unit, that's where we're at. And that'll have some importance here on our first problem. Okay. Let's move that out of the way for a second. All right. Also, whenever doing dimensional analysis type problems, there's a couple steps that we always want to do. The first thing that we want to do is always start with what we know. Okay? And I like using the bracket thing here. Okay, some of you might like this, some of you are going to go, ah, I'm never going to use that. What this is, is every time I go horizontal, I'm multiplying. Okay? 
So whatever's in this box, I'll multiply by that. When I go vertical, then I'm dividing. Okay? So when I go vertical, then I'm dividing. So when I go horizontal, I'm multiplying. When I go vertical, I'm dividing. Okay? It's also like saying that I could do 72.5 centimeters times whatever numbers we get next. I don't care how you do it. Wherever you see the times, that's what this intersection represents. Okay? And again, it's your decision, your preference. Just as long as you're showing me all of your work and all of your units, I'll be happy. Okay? All right, so we wrote down what we know. We know that we're looking for kilometers, so we need to get rid of the unit centimeters. How can we do that? How can I get rid of the unit centimeters? Okay, we'll get a value here in a second, but I'm more curious about getting rid of the unit centimeters. Where do I want to put centimeters in the next step so I can get rid of it? Good. In other words, if it's not the unit you're looking for, slide it diagonally. Okay? You'll hear me use that term a lot in here. Slide it diagonally. In other words, whenever we slide it diagonally, it's like we're putting centimeters over centimeters. What happens when you divide by its own unit? Cancel out. Very good. So they're gone. So that's what we're trying to do. And we want to make sure that if it's not the unit we're looking for, and centimeters is not, we need to make sure that we have it diagonal of where it's at. Now I say diagonal because I'm not saying diagonal down, because later on today we're going to have a number here and we're going to need to move it diagonally up to get rid of that unit. All right. We said that this is a metric to metric conversion, so we can convert between the metric system. Which of these two is bigger, kilometer or centimeter? Oh, cool. Kilometer. So we always give the larger of the two units the value one. Okay. Also, the metric system is a base 10 system. That's why we have all these tens down here. Okay. My question is, going from cente to kilo, how many times do I move to decimal from cente to kilo? How many times I move to decimal? Let's do this. If I had a kilometer, that means I have a thousand meters, right? If I have a centimeter, then I have one one hundredth of a meter. Okay? So if I have one one hundredth of a meter and I'm going from cente, which is equal to 10 to the negative 2, okay? in other words, 1.0 times 10 to the negative 2, right? Then I'll have my decimal right here. I'm going to move it one, two times to get it to here. Okay. How many more times do I need to move it to get it to here? Three. So I'm going to move it three more times. One, two, three. So how many times did I move the decimal from this spot here to that spot there? Five, right? What is the conversion for kilo? Ten to the three, right? So from here to here, I would move the decimal three times. From here to here, from cente to zero, I'd move it two times. So move it twice, and then three more. Okay? So that means that my value is 10 to the 5. In other words, there's 10,000 centimeters in a kilometer. And I never would want you to memorize that. That's worthless information. That's just simply converting by looking at how many times we move the decimal. Let me ask you this. If we were going from gigagrams to micrograms. How many times would I move the decimal? From the giga to micro. How many times would I move the decimal? 15. Very good. So I'd go 9 here, and then I'd go another 6. So what we don't want to do is subtract these values and go, oh, it's 9 minus 6. The only time we want to subtract is if we go from like cente to say micro. How many times would I move the decimal now? 4. Good. Okay. Everybody see that? Alright, so my unit cente is canceled out. I have the unit that I'm looking for. <coughs> Put an equal sign on there. Let's calculate. Okay. And I'd be willing to bet you got either this or this when you typed it in on your calculator. And type it in on your calculator. I'm curious to see what you get. And then I'll tell you how to type it in. Again, it's kilometers. Okay. 
Does anybody like using the EE button, EXP button on their calculator? Or have any idea what it is? It's pretty cool. Here's how I would type this in. Now, we're going to multiply everything on the top. You don't have to multiply by 1 unless you're just dying to. Okay, so 72.5 times 1. Or do 72.5 divided by the 10.5. Now, whenever you hit or write down or hit divided on your calculator, open up a parenthesis. It's going to save you so much heartache and trouble later on. Okay? The 1 times, this is actually 1 times 10 to the 5th or 10,000. I'm going to go 1 EE. That's for TI calculators. If you have a Casio, it might be EXP. Now, on some Casios, it might even be a times 10 to the 10 button. What all of these represent are scientific notation. So, in other words, it's times 10 to whatever number you type in next, which is kind of cool. And then, since it's 5, it should equal that. Now, some of you are old fashioned, I don't mind, and you might just want to go 1 times 10. There's a carrot button there, and then 5, and it should do the same thing. Okay. If you don't know how to enter this in, make sure you talk to me before you leave today. Okay. Did everybody get this? Or this? Some of you may know this, just don't shout it out. Here we have a different type of problem. It's not, I'll tell you, it's not a metric to metric. How do I know that? Because I've got kilometers and I've got miles. So if that's the case, I'll be sure to give you some metric to English conversions or English to metric conversions, however you want to look at that. So these will always be provided to you. You just have to know how to use them. Okay? So looking at this problem here, how do we start? What you, what you know, okay? So we know that we have five kilometers. We don't know how many miles we have, okay? Write down what you know, okay? And that's gonna be a serious issue for the rest of the year, okay? When you look at a problem, you have to know what's given. And, and it sounds like such an easy thing, but in some of these problems, some of these questions, you're gonna have to read into it a little more and go, what did he give us? What are we looking for? That's what you want to know. All right, do I have a conversion from kilometers to miles based on the information I've given you so far? Okay, I have inches to centimeters and miles to feet. Uh, it looks like I'm going to use two conversions. I can't just go from kilometers to miles. And don't, don't say there's like 1,600 meters in a mile. That's, that's way wrong, okay, by a super specific amount. So what do we do with the kilometers? Do we want to keep them? Go ahead, Alyssa. What do you do with it? I don't know. Move it diagonally. Good. We don't want it anymore, so the best way to get rid of it is to slide it diagonally. Okay. And do we have a conversion from kilometers to miles? No, but we do have a conversion from inches to centimeters. So what do we want to change our kilometers to? Centimeters, centimeters very good. That's our metric to metric. Okay. We just did it on the last problem, too. So which one's bigger, kilometer or centimeter? Kilometer. And how many centimeters are in a kilometer again? Ten to the five. Good. And again, kilo, we're going to go three decimal places and then two more, so a total of five. I won't use centi and kilo all the time. All right, so my kilometers are gone. Now I have centimeters. Do I have a conversion from centimeters to miles? No, but I do for inches. Okay, so I'm going to use this conversion here. So I want to, if it's not the unit I'm looking for, if that's not the unit I'm looking for, I need to slide it diagonal. I'll put inches there. Which one's bigger, a centimeter or an inch? inch because there's 2.54 centimeters in every inch. Okay, so centimeters go away. Do I have a conversion from inches to miles? Nah. So what do I need to convert the inches to? Feet. Feet. Very good. I'll use 
use this conversion here eventually. Okay, so the inches are gone. Um, in one foot, there's 12 inches. And then again, slide your unit feet, put miles on top. Or actually, mile, sorry. And in one mile, there's 5280 feet. Isn't this fun? We have our unit, miles. Hot dog. Type this in on your calculator, see how good you guys are. Then I'll help you out. Anybody get that or? I bet some of you knew that. Okay, here we go. Let's again. We're gonna type everything on the top. So we're gonna go five times. And are you? Do you like your ee or how do you type in? I have no clue. Okay. Well, let's. How would you like this value to look in your calculator? Like one times ten to the five, or because that's what that represents. That right there represents one times ten to the five. So it's in scientific notation. Or it also represents 10,000, which I would hate to, for you to type in. So probably the most efficient way, go, and what, you have a green TI, right? Do you know where your EE is? You see it? All right. I want you to type five times one EE, because that is times 10 to whatever we type in next, five. Do we need to multiply all those ones on top? No. Good. You can, but I wouldn't. So hit divided by, because we're done with multiplying everything on top. So I'm going to do divided by, open your parentheses. Okay. Where'd I get what? So that's 1 times 10 to the fifth, divided by, that's 5 times this, times all the ones. Now I'm going to divide it by and multiply everything on the bottom. So 2.54 times. 12 times 5280. Close your parentheses and hit equal. And you have to actually do that. Hit parentheses and then equal. Okay. Type it as is. Does it come up at 3.11? It comes up 3.10685569. So we round it. Now we're looking at the practice problems, and I want to work the first three out. We're not going to do number four, or IV, so go ahead and circle that one right now. Circle IV, yeah, on the practice problem. And then on the back side, I also want you to circle number 10 and number 11. You're not going to do those as homework tonight. Number one on the practice problem here. 643 centimeters. And it wants to know how many feet. Okay. 643 centimeters, and it wants to know how many feet. So, again, how do we start this? Let's write down what we know. Very good. So, 643 in your bracket. Is this going to be more than one step? Yeah, it'll be more than one because we have metric to English. Okay, so it'll be at least one, more than one step. What do I do with the centimeters? Slide it. Very good. Get it out of there. And what do I want to change the centimeters into or convert it into? Inches. Inches. I want to use what I got. Okay. So there's my conversion. And I gave that to you as well. So inches, 2.54. Okay. We don't have what we're looking for yet, so what do I do now? Slide the inches. Slide the inches. And go to feet. And which one's bigger, foot or an inch? Foot. There's 12 inches, so they're gone. We have what we're looking for, so we can put an equal sign on that. What's that? And hopefully you guys are 21.1.
or 21.09580052 is what my calculator says. Now the way that I put this in on my calculator, 643 times 1 times 1 divided by, open the parentheses, 2.54 times 12, close the parentheses equals. Now, can anybody tell me why I'm using the parentheses? I haven't asked that. So that you have to do that first? Or, no, yeah, you have to multiply first. So the calculator multiplies those two together first. Good. What if I did this? Is it wrong if I did this? I mean, is it illegal math if I did that? No, it just go left. It would divide 643 by 2. It would give an answer, and then that 12 actually would act like it were on top. So order of operation helps us to multiply these guys first, so that when we have our number on top and we divide it, we're golden. So it should give you around 21.0958. Okay. Rounding it to 21.1. Okay. Feel a little better about this? 5.0. Times 10 to the 7, what is that, milligrams? Yeah. Is that milli or micro? Milli, okay. And that's wanting to know how many LBS. Bless you. Okay. So, what do we start with? Start with what we know. So we, even though this is in scientific notation, some of you are like, oh man, what's he doing that to us for? Well, this is actually a small number compared to what we're going to be using later on in the year. So make sure that you know how to use scientific notation on your calculator. Because you're not going to want, if it's times 10 to the 23rd, you're not going to want to punch in 22 zeros. Trust me, your calculator won't let you do that. So knowing how to do it in scientific notation is really nice. All right, so I'm going to write what we know for sure. And can I convert milligrams to pounds? What do I need to convert it to? Grams. Grams, very good. And there's our unit there, and that was given to you. So slide milligrams and put grams on top. Which one's bigger, gram or milligram? Gram. How many milligrams in a gram? 10 to the what? So here's 10 to the 0, millis here, 10 to the negative 3. So how many times do I move the decimal? Three, three times. Good. So 10 to the 3 is 1,000. If you want to do scientific notation or 1,000, that's fine. So our milligrams are gone. Now what do I do? Slide. Slide it. So move that gram down. Do we have a conversion from grams to pounds? Yep. Yeah. yeah, baby. Put her on top. Which one's bigger? Pound. Pound. 454 grams per pound. And we have what we're looking for, so we can put our equal sign on there. Let's do some calculating. And some of you may even weigh 5.00 times 10 to 7 milligrams. Yeah. So 5 e 7 divided by, open up, 1 e 3 times 454. Anybody get a number? 110. Very good. And adds pounds. Do we need to put any decimals? I did. <laughs> My calculator actually says 110.1321586. Don't write all that down. Okay. Um, another way to type this in, again, if you're going old school, uh, 5 times 10. Carrot 7 divided by 1 times 10 carat. Does everybody know what I mean when I say carrot? Yeah. Okay. It's a power button, or it's not a times 10, but it's an exponent button. Some, some are like this buttons, or this, I don't know. Depends. No, I just yeah, it's something I really like. It just does that. That's nice. Okay. All right, everybody good there? Let's look at the next one. Somebody last hour said I, it was impossible to do this. Oh, man. 
25.3 micrograms, is that right? Yeah. Per minute. And it wants to know how many pounds per week. Okay. What the heck? It's a rate. It's a rate problem. Okay. Oh boy. There's two units on there. Uh oh. How do we start? How do we start? Write down what we know. Yeah, yeah, you gotta start with what we know. You can't just start making them dance right off the bat. You gotta, you gotta start with what you know. All right, now, I will warn you. Pick one unit, convert it all the way through before you try doing the other one. In other words, if you wanna convert the minutes to weeks first, good idea. Or if you wanna convert the milligrams to pounds, good idea. Don't try to do milligrams and pounds at the same, I'm sorry, milligrams and minutes, micrograms and minutes at the same time. It won't work, okay? So what do you guys want to do first? Micrograms to pounds or minutes to weeks? Micro. I heard micro first, so that's what we're doing, okay? And it doesn't matter which one you do, okay? If it's not the unit we're looking for, slide it, very good. So we're gonna move diagonally. That's why I don't say slide it down or slide it up because we want to move it diagonally. So we're going to put the microgram down here. Okay, we're not even going to look at the minutes for right now. Cover that up, ignore it, don't even, don't erase it, but don't, just ignore it. Um, is there a conversion from micro to pounds? No, so we need to change this to what? Grams, very good. Which one's bigger? And how many micrograms in a gram? So, Gram is here, micro is here, so we move it six times. Very good. Excellent. So six, a little, like a nicer six. Yeah. Bless you, I think. Micrograms are gone. Is there, what do we do with the grams? Slide it. Okay. And what goes on top? Pounds. Very good. That's our conversion. So grams are gone. There's 454 grams in a pound. We have our first unit. I like to circle when I get to a benchmark, so to speak. So I know I'm going to pounds. I got to pounds, so I'm done. I'm not going to do anything else with mass. Okay. Now I'm ready to start with minutes. Where can I put minutes so that I can cancel out that unit? On the top. On the top. Very good. So again, we're sliding it diagonally, so we're moving it up. So we'll put minutes right here. Do we have a conversion from minutes to weeks? No. Not that I'm aware of, and I don't want you to find one. So convert minutes to hour. Yeah, that's a good one. And in one hour, there are 60 minutes. So minutes are gone. Again, ooh, they're diagonal from each other. All right. Yeah, right small. Okay. So what do I do with this hour? Slide it. What can I put below hour? Days. Days. Yeah, yeah, let's do that. That I can do in my head. So in one day there's 24 hours. So hours are gone. Now what? Now we go to weeks. Now we go to weeks. So day moves up. And again, make sure you're showing your units so you know how to move them correctly. Because it gets ugly quick if you're not showing your units. And a week, there's seven days. We have our second unit. We can now put our equal sign on there. Look at all that. Isn't that awesome? That's a problem. All right, before I type it in, I'll write it down. Or somebody tell me, how, how would you type it in? That would be a good start. Times 60. Times 60, yep, skip all those ones. Times 24. Good. Times 7. Divided by? Open the parenthesis. Very good. 10 to the 6. 10 to the 6. How do I write that so in my calculator? EE. Okay, go 1 EE or EXP or 1 times 10 caret. Whatever you do, don't do this. 1 times 10 EE. That's bad. Don't ever do that. That makes Mr. Craig sad. Okay? So don't do that. 
Um, one EE, e, what did we say, six? Times what? Times four. Four fifty-four. Four fifty-four. Excellent. Close her up. Now, that's not as fun because you look at all that and think, wow, look at all that stuff. And then it's only that that we're typing in. Uh, we'll go arrow up here. So like point, and my cat, this is what my calculator is saying, so I'll put it in scientific notation in a second here. Two, and that's pounds per week. Which would be better is this. I'm going to get four. Anybody get that? Or am I way off the mark? Okay. You got that? All right. All right, so again, circle Roman numeral four. We'll do that tomorrow. Also circle number 10 and number 11. We'll do that tomorrow. We'll do those two in class. So your homework tonight is just one through nine. Yeah. One through nine. We'll take it out one. Okay. Do we meet tomorrow? No. An extra day to do it. Awesome. Don't wait though.